What's going on, my people? Welcome back to the Live Capital YouTube channel where life is for the taking. Now, look, Brazil has just legalized cryptocurrency as a payment method. When I saw that, I could not believe it. If you're new to our channel, I'm, my name is Ted Talk Money. I have another breaking news update for you guys. If I have any Brazilians that are listening, your country just legalized cryptocurrency as a payment method. This is huge news and I am here to break it down for you. So please stay tuned because I have some great information for you. Now, as you guys can see right here, really quickly for the people that are new to our channel, what we do is focus on utility cryptos and ISO compliant cryptocurrencies. As you can see right here, we have a watch list, just some of our shining stars stars that we kind of go over on this channel. We're going to be going over our price action, of course, for the market, and then we're going to be getting into some uh, news updates, and then we're going to wrap up with a main piece. You can see right here at the time of this recording, XRP up 4.5% on the week. I want you guys to pay attention to everything that's going to be coming out from Ripple now until the conclusion of the lawsuit. If you're new to our channel, please check out our most recent update of how we actually had a new protocol, a, a new AMM that's being recommended recognized most likely by central banks in their projects. So do not fall for any FUD out there when it comes down to stellar lumens. Al Grand just wrapped up their Decipher uh, event and as well, of course, the World Cup and all <clears throat> FIFA's involvement with Al Grand as well. Guys, keep in mind everything that's happening with FTX and all of that, even with Tether, guys, you really want to keep your eyes out on utility cryptos as they will have longevity post everything that we're seeing right now with volatility. Next right here, your IOTA's right here at 21 cents and XDC is actually at 2.3, guys. So these are some interesting times, especially for uh, utility cryptos. Uh, in the past 24 hours, GBEX is here up 6%, almost 7% on the day. So really interesting things that are happening out here. Now let's get into this uh, next update right here so you can see it. Crypto Bull was putting it out there. He was saying, hey, Pomp, remember when you made fun of XRP and told us your big BlockFi investment? Well, BlockFi is bankrupt while Ripple is about to beat the SEC and XRP will become the number one digital asset. If you guys don't know, uh, Crypto Bull has been on Twitter really just putting us uh, good stuff out there for the XRP community, guys. So go ahead and give him a follow. If you're an XRP holder, you know you want to remain bullish because here's the thing, guys. When it comes down to BlockFi and everything that was connected with it, our premium people, we went over what's happened with it's the digital currency group and their connection with it, even with Genesis and a few other platforms, guys. You really want to avoid those those highly commercialized platforms. So this recently was uh, released actually from Ripple about open banking, and they're really letting the retail community know, crypto community know about open banking and allowing adults that are really involved with banking, even yourself, if you're paying a mortgage or rent, you know, your rent or anything like that, you really want to understand how where's the new phase in banking. So you can see it here. Open banking has the potential to transform payment systems across North America. But 55 percent of adults have never even heard of it. So as you guys can see here, they were just releasing this insight actually in February, but they're bringing it to our attention again because they actually have a few more developments around it. Look at this. <clears throat> open banking takes place when banks and financial institutions give customers and third parties what do they give them what do they give them digital access to financial data so again if you are new to our channel we really focus on this standard called ISO 20022 so this is what's going to be really what's called a de facto in the um, <clears throat> payment landscape scheme of things so right now this ISO standard 20022 it's going to be the the one language for all the money. That's what we like to say over here. So it's really interesting. And to let you know, a, it's going to be the messaging standard for all financial data, okay, for messaging, all financial messaging. So you're seeing here with open banking, financial institutions and banks, customers, all of them, they can agree to have third party uh, institutions or APIs have access to this financial data. So think about the environment. When you have digital assets coming together, ISO cryptos coming together with the Interledger protocol family, all of the financial institutions speaking the same language, money moving as fast as information. Come on, guys. 
These third parties are often able to initiate payments as well as download, easily share information on accounts, balances, payments, all of this. Open banking is gaining traction in the UK and as well where? Brazil, guys. Brazil. Brazil just legalized their crypto, legalized crypto as a payment method. I hope you guys are seeing where this whole thing is going because crypto complemented open banking has the potential to transform payment systems across North America. So again, um, it does. I mean, if you've been holding XRP for maybe a week, maybe a month, maybe even half a year, you really want to get your stripes up. Okay, that's what I really have to say to you. You know, it 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 comes with a bit of faith to hold XRP. But uh, aside from the really the beliefs and the emotions and everything, you guys are really seeing that Ripple is continuing to move forward because even even amongst all of this, MasterCard has launched support for crypto trading. If you guys didn't know, last month or at least in October, they announced it. MasterCard will now support banks that want to offer cryptocurrency trading for their customers through crypto source. OK, now, again, what do we say here? Open banking gives access for third parties, APIs for all of that uh, data. So what MasterCard is going to be doing is giving them access to now they'll be able to. Um, access to technology and partnership support to buy and hold and sell crypto security management crypto spend and cash out capabilities again all of these ranges of products and um man all of these different things to really help all of their customers and clients so next right here you actually have uh alt was putting it out there how do we grow how do we grow uk open banking users from 4 million to 40 million by what 2025 so if you are new to this channel, again, if you're new to ISO and hearing things, we've been covering this for the past year. It's been delayed. This is a new change to happen to banking, but it all has to have a end date. OK, delays and all of this, it all has to have an end time. I want to show you guys this right here. This is the ISO uh, ISO 20022 adoption program from Swift. They're saying it right here that this, this new program is going to change the way people send cross border payments and, of course, financial messages. All right. But I want you guys to see this right here about what they're speaking on. The adoption of these enhanced cross border messages for Swift must be completed by November 25, at which point legacy messages will be retired from the many to many CUG, you know, closer user. Um, long story short, basically all of the legacy legacy partners you see. So these enhanced cross border, these messages, the full scheme has to be completed by November 25. So we're seeing closer and closer mass adoption with crypto complemented open banking xrp misku was putting out there coinbase is an app for retail xrp is not meant for retail it's meant for central banks and institutions she's really uh going off of what we were actually uh putting out there with you guys earlier about how you actually have coinbase saying rip to xrp if you will and what i want you guys to really understand with this cease of support from coinbase is that the chosen coins that they're cutting off support from, they will no longer have access to those dApps and networks through Coinbase. That's something that people need to understand. And because this app is so readily available for retail, you know, obviously a majority of the mass adoption coming for crypto, they're not going to do their research. They really just want to go for, you know, chase green candles and, you know, what's the most convenient retail platform. So the fact that they, you know, they have to say, well, there's low usage for uh, XRP here, low usage xrp xlm bitcoin cash and ethereum classic guys i'm gonna be honest with you man i'm be totally honest with you it's uh, the writing is on the wall so for real bricks nations news and of course again if you are just getting to this channel if you just got in somewhere else we cover bricks nations for a reason we personally believe that the bricks nations that's brazil russia india china south africa plus bricks plus that they're actually representing for the future that they're actually showing the rest of the world how it's supposed to go. Because if you guys don't know, they have a surplus of everything that the world needs. Commodity. Okay. India has a surplus of grain. Uh, Russia is sending discounted gold to China. You know, and on the books, you have this civil unrest because of this zero COVID policy coming out from China. But guys, it's all on the books. We've covered that. 
So you can see an India Central Bank to start retail CBDC pilot now on December 1st. We're seeing it. It's closer and closer and closer. And if you know, if you think for a second that crypto is going somewhere, it's really about these CBDCs. So again, if you are new really to our channel, the reason why we focus on these central bank digital currency coins, coins that are able to actually handle this is because this is this is the truth. Central bank digital currencies are continuing to rise in prevalence, in prevalence. So if you guys want to know a little bit about this, uh, the Reserve Bank said that they're announcing the launch for their digital year uh, rupee on the December 1st. So, yeah, guys, I mean, we've been covering with you guys the thing about Russia or uh, India's financial manager is that they've been on and off, on and off about crypto. I mean, inciting some high taxes on crypto, about 30 percent, I believe, 30 or 80. It's it's ridiculous. All right. I want you guys to hear this. David Schwartz was really having a fireside chat out there at Decentral. I believe Decentral is going on right now or they wrapped up today or something like that. I want you guys to hear his thoughts on what's going on with XRP and really um, his his take on the future of, of Web3. Listen to this. An organized operation. So he said, what Ripple, the company, is going to do is we're going to focus on building high-quality technologies that will allow institutional adoption. And so we look, what are the blockers? Why can't banks use a cryptocurrency to settle? And the answer is their messaging systems are antiquated. They don't even know like where the money has to go when they make a payment. The messaging isn't even closed loop. It's back in the 70s if you're lucky. Uh, and so we focused on building a system called RippleNet, which is an institutional messaging and settlement system that can settle with a digital asset. Um, meantime, all kinds of other projects on the XRP ledger, focusing on things like payments, but also things that are not payments, um, stable coins, which are kind of payment adjacent, um, and, and all kinds of different projects, including more recently things like NFTs. So there's an ecosystem of development on the XRP ledger, and then there's Ripple, who's, among other things, working to drive institutional adoption use the XRP ledger as a settlement. Yeah, and, and j just real quick on that notion, um, do you think people, sometimes people just get confused about XRP and Ripple, like me, like the relationship between it? Because, you know, you're talking about Ripple being a centralized entity, it's a, it's a business, right? It's a, right? it's a company, and then XRP ledger being, you know, decentralized overall. Um, what's the best way for people to, I mean, you kind of outlined it there, but what's the best way for people to think about that? Because I think sometimes I hear people say things like, oh, well, you know, Ripple centralized, so it's it's bad in crypto, et cetera. But everything that you're describing right now is like, hey, no bank is going to want to use a technology, at least not right now, that is going to, um, you know, take con complete control out of their hands, right? So h how would you kind of It's talk actually to that? very interesting. So I've heard a lot of people say that no bank would want to use a decentralized system. They want to use a system they can control. The problem is, if you are Deutsche Bank, HSBC, Credit Suisse, JP Morgan Chase, and maybe two or three others, that argument is perfect. But, if, but, that, but that's what, five banks? How many banks are there? Right? There's thousands. If you're any other bank but those five or six I just mentioned, a system controlled by the banks is a system controlled by your competitors. And Boy. if I say, well, would you want to rely for your business on a system controlled by your competitors? That sounds a lot less exciting. Right? People think of banks as like, you know, people will say these things like, oh, the big banks, you know, they've got the whole. You guys see that? You guys see where he was going with that? You know? Uh, let me, I'll, I'll, I'll play this for you guys. I'll play this for you guys. Dig this. Well, you know what? You know what? Just uh, go ahead and give go ahead and give 801 XRP a follow over on Twitter. Uh, and big shout out to him for really covering this. But he makes a good point there. And I want you guys to really hear what he just said. He said, the reason why you have this hiccup, the reason why you have this slowdown is because of the messaging systems are antiquated. And he's pretty much getting it swift without getting it swift, you know, mentioning that the technology goes back to the 70s and everything. So what he's saying is that RippleNet is building something institutional for these, again, institutions, financial uh, institutions, entities to settle in on crypto, to make it possible to bring it forward. And then Ripple, obviously, is is utilizing xrp so for example if you are new to crypto if you are new to this channel understand that ripple and xrp they're separate okay now ripple and the xrpl two separate things but ripple is heralding in xrp using it for what it's supposed to be used for so big shout out to joel katz for what he does seriously a good thing all right now to the main piece here my people main piece here my people 
Now, right here, like I just said, so Brazil is a part of the BRICS nations. OK, so they've said it right here that they have passed a law to legalize crypto as a payment method. So I want to just give you guys this closer look. We can actually review this and I want you guys to see this for ourselves here. The law was approved by the Chamber of Deputies of Brazil, but still requires the approval they're saying of the uh, executive branches. Now, the passing of the bill does not make any cryptocurrency legal tender within the country. However, the bill will include digital currencies and air mileage programs in the definition of payment methods that are under the supervision of the country's central bank. OK, so keep that in mind that it's not exactly, you know, how El Salvador has Bitcoin as legal tender and all of that. Now, crypto is legal as a payment method in a BRICS nation. All right. So, again. Please look through our library to understand why that's important. After being passed into law, the government's executive branch must decide which office will be in charge of the actual supervision. Still, tokens that will be considered securities will remain under jurisdiction by the Brazilian SEC. So apart from designating crypto as a payment method, the law enables the creation of licenses for exchanges and custody and management of crypto by third parties. So guys, we're gonna be seeing that happen more and more in a country near you, all right? That that's really gonna become the business of crypto. But we're going to see this after regulations come about. You guys could see it, Brazil is moving forward, bringing forward digital asset adoption, bringing forward digital asset connections here. In addition to this, the law will require exchanges to make a clear distinction between company and user funds to avoid other another incident like the FTX collapse. So, again, guys, you're seeing it when you have, for example, Doquan's not locked up. Doquan is still out here operating, living and breathing, doing what he's doing. Nobody's talking about it, but the regulators have already baked in to all of their new uh, legislation the do you know the do Kwan, the stable coin regulation now we can actually come about and make sure that these exchanges operate right you see what i mean you you know the uh, we uncovered it with you guys there was a whole shadow crypto regime the first wave to put in motion all of this digital asset change and then who's going to solidify it all who's really going to solidify everything that we're talking about here the banks the banks is what's going to do that okay seriously Hey guys, I appreciate you making it to this part of the video. Please hit that like button, hit the subscribe, and as well hit the bell so you don't miss out on any of our updates. But I'll holler at you later. Peace.